This is the story of the Swift River Valley Historical Society Museum. The story starts here at the Quabbin Reservoir in central Massachusetts. The Quabbin's located just north of Route 9 in Belchertown. On the east, it's bounded by Route 32A in towns such as Hardwick and Petersham, and on the west by Route 202, Shootsbury and Pelham. 400 billion gallons of water, all Class A, so clean it requires no filtration. The water goes down 150 feet in some places. The shoreline runs 18 miles north to south, and the reservoir is surrounded by 56,000 acres of watershed. This reservoir was created about 70 years ago. The story goes back to the early 1900s when the rapidly expanding population of the greater Boston area needed ever more fresh drinking water. Engineers surveyed the state and were attracted to the bowl-shaped Swift River Valley walled in by hills rising several hundred feet on either side with two small gaps at the southern end. In a 1922 report, state hydrologists indicated that all they needed was to block off the southern end and impound the three branches of the Swift River and Ware River. They did this first with the Windsor Dam, stretching about half a mile and rising 295 feet, and then the Goodnow Dyke, stretching over 2,100 feet, 135 feet high. So by 1946, the dam was built, the reservoir filled, the tunnel connecting the water supply system completed, and Boston had a fresh water supply good for many decades. And this is where the story takes an emotional turn. This valley had been populated since the 1740s, about 200 years. The valley was home to four towns, Enfield, Dana, Greenwich, and Prescott. 3,400 people lived here in 1850. About 2,000 still remained when news of the pending fate was confirmed in 1922. There were factories, such as this one in Enfield, where residents working made brooms, Panama hats, and boxes. There were hotels for the travelers and visitors, such as the Swift River Hotel in Enfield, dating back to the days of the stagecoach. Stores such as this one, which doubled as the post office. Schools here in Enfield and Prescott. Each of the four towns was incorporated in Massachusetts, and each had their own town halls. A railroad running between Athol and Springfield, 46 miles with 19 stops. But you could not have the buildings underwater inside the reservoir, so they were all removed. In fact, they needed to remove all inhabitants from the area that was even not underwater in the surrounding watershed to avoid any possible contamination from runoff. Some houses were even trucked away, such as this one from Greenwich. Below the target waterline, trees were cut down, brush was burned, because you couldn't provide a home to algae. Even the topsoil was scraped away. This once green valley looked like a barren desert. And the reservoir was filled up. All buildings, farms, residents, trees, all gone. But they're not forgotten. An intriguing part of this story is that you can visit the watershed area above the waterline. Here you can walk miles of paved roads and cleared paths, gated to prevent vehicles, mapped and maintained by the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, the DCR. You can see numerous stone foundations, as this one from the 21-room Powers Mansion, and many cellars with their large stone foundations. A favorite destination is Dana's Common, well maintained by the DCR and the cellar hole from the Dana Town Hall. The Vaughan House with its distinctive smooth stone foundation. Part of your walking tour can include the Quabbin Visitor Center, staffed by knowledgeable DCR rangers. Or you can visit the richest source of historical artifacts from this area, the Swift River Valley Historical Society Museum up in New Salem. The museum was founded in 1936, and it features three buildings. The Prescott Church, the carriage shed, constructed in 1980 to house the larger artifacts, and the Whitaker Clary House, built in 1816 and still in its original location, 
There are several large-scale relief maps of the valley, meticulously detailing where the roads, rivers, homes, and farms were before the flooding. You can also see the wedding dresses worn by the Page sisters. As young girls, they promised that they would not wed until all three could be married on the same day, which they did in 1906. This room shows the original wallpaper in the Clary House, 200 years old, and a working piano from the era, plus many figurines and collectibles, all donated either by the inhabitants or by their descendants. There are separate rooms that are dedicated to each of the four towns. Here in the Enfield room, we have the spinning wheel for flax, which was grown in this area. Furniture, lamps, and many, many photos and posters from the era. This rocking cradle was used for all three girls in the Goodnow family, Mary, Mahela, and Maria. Their proud dad custom built this rocking cradle in 1845. Each town had its own band. Doctors made house calls, and they compounded their own prescriptions and medicines. This wooden toddler walker from the era, has a smart touch of having a very wide lower hoop, thus to prevent the toddler from getting too close to the fireplace. And here's the Greenwich Room. Many of these paintings were done by Bert Brooks, who is famous for his rich landscapes. The school teacher's dress is on the right, and a wedding dress is on the left. It was not always the custom that the bride wore white. Here's the room dedicated to Dana artifacts. This photo shows a wagon delivering straw. The straw was actually imported from Panama. Home-based workers would weave the straw into hats, and then they would be shipped worldwide. Panama hats. The carriage shed houses the larger artifacts, such as this 1929 Dana fire truck. This Native American Indian canoe was found in the valley, buried in the mud, which preserved it. Farming was a major enterprise in the area. These plows were pulled by draft horses and steered by the farmers. Electricity did not come to the valley for some time, so these washing machines were hand-cranked. For a long time, horses were the major means of transportation, and this saddle is from that era. High schoolers took the train up to Athol, but each town provided a grammar school. These school desks echo several generations of desk design. Even then, recess was the favorite part of the day. Here are the baseballs from that era, and the flat five-fingered glove with minimal padding, so you had to be careful when you were fielding a line dress. Over in the third building is the Prescott Church. The church has its original pews. The stained glass windows were replaced in 1911 after a lightning strike. Parishioners donated $11.50 for each window and got their name inscribed on that window. This is the newer organ. Its 1800s partner was restored, and both are used for services and weddings. And the silver service, also still used. and the spinning wheel, and the Swift River Valley Society banner displayed at area parades and annual events. The Swift River Valley Historical Society Museum is at 40 Elm Street in New Salem. Everyone's a volunteer. The docents are exceptionally knowledgeable about the valley and its history. The museum is generally open Wednesdays and Sundays from 1 to 4 p.m. from mid-June to August. Then the museum is open only Sundays from September to Columbus Day. You can check their website at that very long URL, swiftrivervalleyhistoricalsociety.org, for additional information and to see the Quabbin-related events and hikes that are open to all.